So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Excel for Excel for the first Excel assignment. This is the uh, skills review that begins on page 197 in the Microsoft Office textbook, in the uh, workbook rather. So to start with Microsoft Excel, you're going to open up Microsoft Excel and you're going to see a screen that looks similar to this. And we're going to start with a blank workbook. So in, in many of the other um, exercises, you started with a a starter document, but for this first Microsoft Excel assignment, we're going to start with a blank workbook and we're going to start from scratch. So go ahead and click on blank workbook and you'll see a grid that comes up that looks a lot like this. So a few prerequisites here about this grid. So the way that the instructions reference the grid, it's sort of like playing bingo or battleship. You've got the rows, which are your letters across the top, and you've got your rows down the side. So columns across the top, which are the letters, and your rows down the side, which are the row numbers. So if I asked you to click on cell B5, you would click the set, you would, you would click the cell that intersects column B and row five, just like you see here. Occasionally you'll be asked to type something into a cell. So you click on the cell and you would type something like so. Now, once you type something in the cell, there are three ways that you might be asked to, uh, to grab a cell and and highlight other cells. So you might be asked to highlight multiple cells. To do that, you're gonna click right in the middle of the cell when you see the larger crosshair. So there's three types of crosshairs. There's a larger crosshair that you see now on my screen. When I scroll down to the little tiny box on the bottom right of the cell, you'll see the smaller crosshair. And then when you scroll on any of the other edges, you see the smaller crosshair with the arrows. I'll show you the difference. With the large crosshair, I click, I drag and it highlights the cell or cells. That's pretty simple. However, if I click on the small little tiny box in the bottom right and I click and drag, it will copy the contents of that cell to any other cell to which I drag and I can drag in multiple directions. By the way, control Z will undo whatever it is that you did. And finally, the uh, when you grab the cell with the four arrows, that's going to move to a different cell. As you can see here, it moved that cell to another location. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do in cell A1 uh, through D1, we're going to type some labels for our spreadsheet. So according to the instructions, in A1, I'm gonna type cottage name. In B1, weeks rented. Weekly rate, oh, I'm sorry, weekly rental rate. And finally, total revenue. Okay, so first problem we have here is it's hard to see each of the values in these cells, so we can change the width of the columns. One way we can change the width is simply clicking and dragging to change the width. And by the way, take a look at how I'm dragging that. So when I put my arrow over a column A, I can highlight it, and likewise over column B. But when I click between the two columns, I get that special icon that has the two arrows pointing to the left and the right. When you see that icon and you double click, it'll automatically widen the cell to fit the contents. I'll do it again on the other cells. There we go. So now we can see the content of each of these cells. All right, so for the cottage name, um, we are going for, so from cells A2 to A8, we're going to type in some cottage names. Uh, you can get creative with these, but I'm going to go ahead and type the ones in from the book. Now, when you type the names in for the, the cottages, you can make up any names you like, or you can use the ones from the book, but feel free to be creative. So now that we have this, we're also going to type in the number of weeks that are rented and the weekly rental rate. So we're going to type those in as well. Now these values, it's best if you use the ones from the book. And by the way, I'm getting these from the uh, from step 2C in the uh, workbook. So in step 2C, it will tell you what to enter for these fields. There's a little table in there that will show you this. Now let's say if we were making this uh, spreadsheet, let's say we forgot to have a row at the top for our label for the spreadsheet. Maybe we want to have a nice little label at the top, like a title bar. So we're going to insert a couple new rows. So you're going to right click on row one. So I'll show you how I did this. On row one, I right click, I'm going to insert a new row. We're actually gonna go ahead and insert two new rows. 
And in row number one, we are going to type um, cottage rental revenue, summer season. Just like that. All right. We are going to increase the width of columns B and C. Um, so we want to make sure we make these columns the right width. So I'm going to click and drag. And I can't double click now because if I do that, it will double, it'll, it'll take the, the length of this entire column at the top. But really, I just want this to show everything in the first column. And likewise, I'm going to make these a little bit wider so I can fit the content. It'll just look a little bit nicer. And you could do the same thing in yours. All right, so uh, we entered our label. Uh, we're going to increase the height of row two to 30 pixels. So if I click and drag, let me show you how I did that. So right between row two and row three, I click, drag it down till I get to about 30. It doesn't have to be exact, just roughly 30 pixels, just like you see here. Now, likewise, let's assume that we forgot one of our columns in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to right click on A, insert a new column. Now, I didn't want to insert the column over here. So to undo that, I'm going to hit Control Z, which does which un, which will undo what I just did. I'm going to right click on column B and click insert. And now it's put a column between uh, A and B, which is what I wanted. And I'm going to add a new column here. We're going to call this cottage type. And we're going to put a label for each one of the cottages. And again, this is in your textbook on uh, step F. So it's going to be step 3F. It shows you a little table. Um, it'll tell you to enter these into B4 through B10. So once you've entered all those values, uh, we're going to continue on to step G, which is just the width of column B by double clicking the boundary between B and C. So if we double click between B and C, it'll adjust it down for us. So it'll make sure that we're fitting the content. Moving on to step number four, now we're going to use some formulas. So this is the only part that's a little bit tricky. A lot of you probably have never done formulas before. So one of the things that you might be tempted to do is, and I'll bring up my calculator. So I'm gonna bring up a calculator and I wanna put the total revenue for the first cabin. So I could just do 12 times 895. I get the answer 10,740. So maybe I'll just type that in here which is fine. The only problem with this is let's say we rented this cabin 13 times. So I changed this to 13. Now this is wrong, 10,740. I'd have to get my calculator out and recalculate that value. We don't want to do that. You change this back. A better way to do this is we hit the equal sign and then we're going to tell Excel to multiply the two columns. Now I've had some students that do this to say, okay, I can do that. So I'll do 12 times 895. Once again, I get the answer, but if I change the 12 to a 13, this value is not updated. I'm sure most of you have had algebra class where we use variables in algebra class as sort of a placeholder for a number or we solve for that variable like x. You can think of these columns as like x in an algebra equation. We're going to put the address for the cell as a placeholder into this column. So for example, I know I want to multiply the value in C4, right? C4 is where the 12 is. So I'm just going to type C4 times the value in D4. So I'll type D4. Hit enter, and I get the answer. Even better than that, if I change the 12 to a 13, it automatically updates. I'll change this back to a 12. Likewise, if I change the weekly rate from, say, 8.95 to thousand dollars you can see it automatically updates it so that's one way to do it the other way you could type the equation in instead of typing in c4 you can simply click the 12 and it'll automatically put c4 in for you then i hit times and click d4 it automatically puts it in hit enter and i'm done now here's the other nice thing about doing it this way when i click this fill handle on the bottom right i showed you this in the beginning of the lesson when we click that little fill handle on the bottom right and I drag down, Excel is smart enough to know that for each time it copied, it incremented the row count for us. So it automatically copied that formula while incrementing the row count. You can see up here it incremented that to a 5, 
and then increment it to a six, and then an eight, and so seven, eight, and so forth, and so on. So all of this is automatically updated for us as we copy with the fill handle. So the other thing we can do here is we can add uh, sum. We can sum these columns. So in our textbook, they ask us to sum column C and column E, which is our total. So we want to see the total number of weeks that we've rented. Now, one way you could do this is hit the equal sign and simply click each one, hitting a plus. Of course, if you had a lot of values here, that would take a long time. So we could use a function to do this instead. So I'm going to highlight this. And we'll learn more about functions later. For right now, you can use the shortcut if you go to the upper right-hand side of your screen while you're in the Home tab. So by the way, the tabs and the, uh, and the groups are basically like uh, in the ribbon, are, are, are kind of like Microsoft Word, which you've been using already. It's the same basic concept, the same interface. So we're going to click the Home tab. And then in the Editing group, I'm going to click on Auto Sum. And I want to do a sum for that column. And then I simply hit Enter, and it gives me the sum. I could do the same thing for total revenue. So I'm going to click on auto sum, hit enter, and I have the sum. $68,715 is my total revenue. So that was pretty easy. Let's move on. So if we change the weeks rented for a robin's nest, so where is robin's nest? It's right here. Oops, I spelled robin's nest wrong. Let me fix that. By the way, let me show you how I'm doing that. So if you ha highlight a cell and you want to edit it, you have to go to the top. So once you put a value in, you have to edit by going up to the top. So I'm going to go up here, change the Q to an O. That's fixed. They want us to change the week's rent at the 14 and see what happens. Now, if we did this right, when I change this to a 14, the 77 should be automatically updated. The total revenue for Robin's Nest will be updated, and that would cause the total revenue overall to be updated as well. So all of those numbers should change. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to put 14. We have 68.75 right now for total revenue, and it changes to 73,095. So that works. All right, let's see. The next step in this assignment, um, they want us to apply the accounting number format to D4 through E11. So D4 through E11 are dollars, right? So that's money. So we're going to change that to a money format. And one way we can do that is click up here at the top. There's a dollar sign. You can use different units, but we're going to go ahead and use English, United States. And there we go. So now it shows dollar amounts for the, uh, or dollars and cents. So that makes a little bit more sense. Insert a column to the left of column E, and we're going to put in a seasonal end date uh, in E3. So let's take a look at how to do this. So between E so let's see, we're going to insert a column to the left of column E. So that means we're going to highlight E, click insert. There's our column to the left of column E. So this one automatically moved over to F. And by the way, uh, it automatically copies the formulas as well. So we don't have to worry about modifying or updating those formulas. The label for this is going to be the season end date. All right, so I type that in. And we're going to enter September 15th, 2017 in cell E4. Okay, now we have a problem. We put in September 17th, 2017, but it automatically changed it to money because it thought we were trying to enter money, not a date. So we have to fix that. So we're going to change this column to be a short date format. So we're going to go up to the top up here in the number format group. We're going to choose short date. And it automatically fixed it and put it back to 9-17-2017. Now we're going to copy that data from E4 and we're going to paste it to cells E5 through E10. So I'm going to click the little handle and drag it down. It's automatically copied it. Um, however, it added and incremented each date, which isn't necessarily what we wanted. Uh, but we can leave it like that for now for this assignment. One thing I do want to show you as well, for some of you, you might see pound signs like this. If you see pound signs, that's Microsoft Excel's way of telling you that the data that's in that column 
is not large enough. It's not the column is not large enough to display the full data. So that just means you have to make the column a little bit wider so you can see the value of that column. So if you do see the pound signs, go ahead and just make that a little bit wider. So in E3 through F3, we're going to center these labels. So the easy way to do that, I'm going to highlight all these rows. Remember to highlight, we're going to click in the middle of the column and drag. So we're going to highlight all of those columns. And at the top, I'm going to in the, uh, let's see, where is it up here? Here we go. So we're going to center align. So in the alignment group, we're going to click on the button to center align. And this is a little bit like Microsoft Word. So that's now center aligned. We're going to merge and center E1 through F1. I'm sorry, A1 through F1. So I'm going to click on A1 down to F1. This is five separate cells right now. I'm sorry, six separate cells. But when we click merge and center, it's going to combine those cells and center our title across the top. All right, so once you get to this step, you're basically done. I'm going to add a little bit of formatting just to make it look a little nicer. I can make my title bold give it a different color, maybe increase the font size a little bit. I'm going to make these bold, line this up a little bit so I can see it. Uh, maybe I'll make this bold as well. So you could do some little enhancements on your dot on your, your spreadsheet to make it look a little bit nicer. So once you're done, save this. So we're going to click on File, Save As. I'm just going to save it in my downloads and I'm going to call it Excel one. You can call it anything you like. It doesn't really matter. Just remember where you're saving it. Remember what you called it. Once you're done, you're going to close Microsoft Excel. So once it's saved, close Microsoft Excel. Back in Blackboard, you're going to click on module seven. Browse to your document that you created. So I'm going to go to Downloads. Highlight the assignment, which I remember the name from before. Click Open. It's now ready to upload into Blackboard. Click Submit, and you're done. So at this point, you've completed Excel assignment number one.